Hello, Jumpers, and welcome to episode number 17 of the Nintendo Jump Podcast. We are a weekly discussion podcast created for Nintendo gamers by Nintendo gamers. It's the week of October 15th. I'm Daryl, and today I'm once again joined by Sergio. Hello, everybody. And Kevin. What's good, everybody? It is episode number 17, guys. How are you feeling? I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got nothing. <laughs> just one seven. That's it. You know, we're just gonna gonna rock with it. I, I I wish I had something to say about seventeen, but yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> well, you're becoming more like your father. Anyways, <laughs> so... whoa, he doesn't we say that. A... <laughs> I know what you we mean. Have a, I know we have a fun. <laughs> you done? <laughs> I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> we have a fun episode planned. So this week, the big release this week, at least in, in our opinions, is actually Starlink Battle for Atlas. So mm-hmm. we're going to have a quick discussion on our initial impressions. Obviously, we have not you know, played the game all the way through, but we all have uh, picked it up and, and played some of it. So we're going to get into that. And then for the second half of the show, we're actually going to get into some listener mail. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to use the boost to get through. So, Starlink, first things first, this game is kind of unique in that it is one of these Toys to Life games, but you can also get a version of the game digitally. So, first question first, how did you guys actually pick this up? Did you decide to go with the physical route, or did you go with the digital? So, I went with all digital. I know the toys look really nice, especially the R-Wing looks super cool, and I actually thought that there was a an option to buy the standard edition because I didn't really need the toys. Yeah, I thought it was cool. Yeah, you know, but but then I realized that when I looked on Best Buy, they only had the $75 version, which comes with the toys. And I was like, you know what? I got some credit in my eShop. Fork it. Fork it. I'm just going to, you know, use some of that store credit. Yeah, eShop credit and just go with that. So I bought it digitally and I have not regretted my purchase since. <laughs> Did you go with the uh, the standard edition or the deluxe? I went with the standard, just because, like, I think for me, I I don't know, I didn't really need all the the new weapons and stuff. Like, I feel like some of the things I could get in game, it's good enough for me. I don't need all the like like every single widget or every single weapon. I mean, it is pretty cool. If I were a lot younger, I would definitely have gotten the the physical version with the toys, but. For given my priorities in life and just what I in just my gaming backlog, I just felt like game digital version was just right for me. So uh, although I might get the toys later, I don't know. I mean, the Arwen's <laughs> cool and all, but I don't want to discount the other stuff too because the other chips look pretty rad too. So I mean, can't just it's not all about the Arwen. Although the, it is a pretty big point to selling this game. So <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, well. You know what they say. Sometimes you just have to check your G diffuser. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sergio, what about you? What did you decide to go with here? So I went with the physical version. I, I tend to do that for single-player games or for any game that is not really heavily competitive, like you want to have it installed and ready to go, like whenever. Mm-hmm. So just just by that, I, I had decided to go physical. But the Arwen, having the Arwen, it's, it's so awesome. I mean... I saw it in videos and how it snaps to the the controller shell that comes with the bundle and it looked cool. But when you see it in person and you're actually kind of holding it and, and flying it, oh man, it's just it's so awesome. Mm. No, I I definitely agree. So I decided to go originally. I decided to go with the physical version and I actually pre-ordered it and it was shipped to me and I I had it in my hands. Mm-hmm. And then some things came to light that. I wasn't all that crazy about, so I ended up returning it and getting the digital, but, man, that was painful, because, man, it looks yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, oh, man, it's, they, I mean, just even looking from, like, on the screen, like, the the build, like just looking at the build quality, not even having it physically, but just, man, it looks really nice, but. Uh, it is bigger than you think it would be, like, the, I, yeah, I the actual <laughs> thing, I did not expect how big it is, and just today, I was in, in Best Buy, and I saw some of the extra ships and such and and they're they're just huge they're really yeah. big and and detailed and nice like mm-hmm. i don't you know i'm not in a stage in life that i'm gonna spend 25 dollars on one but i can definitely see the appeal there also the uh the little tiny star fox is amazing <laughs> 
But I mean, you know, I just I had to trust my instincts on this one, and the Ooh, reason I man. uh, <laughs> yeah, they're man, these are coming quick. I swear. Yeah, the, the reason the reason I uh, used the break and and decided to go digital on this was actually it came out that there was a a pretty massive uh, difference in the amount of stuff that you get in game if you mm-hmm. go physical versus digital, and actually it's actually a lot more if you go digital uh, of the stuff that you get in game. So yeah. just to kind of list it out. So for the physical package, and this is in, in the United States of America for our international list- listeners, I hear uh, some of the international prices are a little crazy on this game. So I'm not mm-hmm. even going to try to attempt that, but the physical version you get the, all the plastic stuff, and which is awesome. I'm I'm not gonna discredit that at all. It really is cool. But you in game, you only get two ships, two pilots, and three weapons, and that comes out to seventy five dollars. You do what? then get the yeah. You do then get the controller holder and the R wing and the little fox, and and that's awesome. But oh, yeah. that's it. The digital version, the standard edition, you get five ships, seven pilots, and 12 weapons for $60. So it's $15 less, and you get four times the weapons alone and, and three more ships. That I, I read that, and I was just like, it's like man. What? Yeah, that's a big difference, because then when I was just going through looking at the pilots and the ships, I was like, oh, okay, this seems pretty standard, but then the way you said it with the physical version, is like, oh, man, that's... Yeah, that's a big difference, man. I think digital seems seems like the good way to go to start, uh, but, I mean, that's a, it's a trade-off, right? Because then when you get physical, you get all the, the neat little toys, and also that, that Joy-Con thing where you get to put your Joy-Con... Like, the Joy-Con holder where you put your ship on it, too. Like, I think that was probably the most unique thing that I've, uh, I've seen sure. this year in terms of, you know, accessories and, like... There's definitely a lot of thought put into that, and that's probably that's probably one what I would if I were to get the physical um, edition, it would be just for that. So yeah, and then just to touch on the the de- digital deluxe. So in the eShop, it says mm-hmm. uh, when you pick the bundle, it says you're saving something like 147 dollars. Honestly, I kind of <laughs> think that number is a little bit made up or yeah. not exactly realistic. In that, mm-hmm. if you get the deluxe version over the standard version it's twenty dollars more so it's priced at eighty dollars and you get one more ship three more pilots and three more weapons if you bought all of that separately plus the standard digital version you'd be paying twenty six dollars so you're basically Mm -hmm. saving six dollars if you really want all those things and obviously if you just want piecemeal you don't want the pilots or something you'll actually save money uh, by going with the standard and just getting the individual pieces. The only way I could make that make sense is if you bought the physical version and then paid the individual digital prices for all the the toy or all the um ships and stuff. So if for some reason you got the initial starter pack physical but then did not go with the toys and only got the digital DLC, that's kind of where that $147 came from. So that's a little mm. slightly misleading, I thought. It's quiet. Too quiet. <laughs> I guess I should be thankful. You you know what's crazy? <laughs> you know what's crazy though? I think the prices for all the items, all the different pieces, are the same for both physical and digital. I, that's I mean, in a way, it's interesting. It's nice that they're trying to balance things out. And I kind of feel like digital games are always scared, like the short end of the stick, like. You know, when you buy physical, you get the disc, you get the box, you get to sell the game again. There's a lot of benefits. In digital games, they usually aren't priced lower because they're digital, which I think they should be. And um, so on this one, now you're getting a lot of extra content that you don't get with the box. That's nice, but maybe they put a little too much or maybe just the physical version is missing some of the stuff. And, And again, with the pricing of the individual pieces... I guess they try to they try to set something like the the in between a good price for something physical versus digital. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. Uh, I wonder, depending how much if there's any backlash, if they're gonna give a little extra digital content to people that bought the physical bundle. Yeah, I've been curious about that. I hope I hope they do because then I mean yeah, just based off what you said, there. I mean, it's just like in terms of content, it's just not there's a huge it's difference. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's just like. 
that puts more value onto the toys. Like, but we'll see. I mean, I haven't heard anything through the grapevine about any complaints with the physical and digital yet, or maybe I just haven't looked through <laughs> that <laughs> much through the web. But you know, it's great to you know really talk about the content in terms of what you get. But what do you guys think about the game itself? I mean, because we all had some. We we played a little bit last night. I hope the uh, I myself played it for about a couple hours. But yeah, what do you guys think about the game like so far? Initial impressions. I mean, let let's rock and roll. I can go. Uh, do it. So, <laughs> I so far this game is really scratching an itch for me, and it's it's interesting. It's not scratching really. I'll I'll say the Star Fox itch. It's really not mm-hmm. because like a lot of reviews have mentioned it's really not a Star Fox game it doesn't really play the same way it doesn't have the same uh type mission structure or anything mm-hmm. like it. it Star Fox is much more arcadey this is actually more like uh I don't know if if you guys have ever played the the Wing Commander series it's kind of like a a younger version of that it's very mm. character driven you do have a lot of interactions there's a lot of like free flight but you have this central ship it reminds me a lot actually of, of wing commander just mm. in its structure but they've also added this uh this real push for space exploration and and trying to build up the resources on the planets so i just got to the part where you can actually travel around planets and start building up your your armories and mm-hmm. I forget exactly what they're called, but basically the, the mines that give you resources yeah. and um, the the outposts style. I think it's the refineries? I think it's the refineries. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I got to that part, and that actually kind of started reminding me of what it felt like to initially play uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X, where you're exploring this world that you don't know, and you're just going around placing these nodes to try to map out the area. But on, like, kind of simultaneously on a smaller scale because all the planets are a little bit smaller and less complicated than the world of Xenoblade, but then also on a bigger one because you got a bunch of planets to, to traverse. So it's right now it's hitting me in a really good spot. Sergio, what is your initial thought? Well, m- mine is that I'm I'm with you that it's, it's, you know, it's not a traditional Star Fox game, but I kind of wanted to approach it in that way as much as I could. I'm thinking of it as like a a reboot to Star Fox or like a mm-hmm. not a spin off but like a sidestep to the series. It's like open world Star Fox with some human characters added in for good measure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, you know, not to dismiss the, the work that Ubisoft has made, but I kinda wanted to approach it in this way because I'm a huge Star Fox fan and I, I feel like it's already paying off. I I feel like I'm already enjoying the game a lot. I, to me it does kinda I, I'm taking as much Star Fox as it gives me and I, I'm going with that. I I love it. I so I got the physical version right, and I'm I really like the fact that you can switch the weapons on the go, like mm-hmm. whenever you want. Uh, you can even disable the game from pausing when you take out one of the weapons, and you can even put the weapons uh, either facing front or facing backward, wh- whatever you wanna, whatever you feel helps you most in battle. Yeah. Uh, mm. I mean, just just by that. I mean, I like that so much. I actually already <laughs> ordered. All the weapons available physically, so I have. Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm embracing this, man. Here, I, I here love it. it. I, yep. <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, it's. I mean, the the toys, like just like the little things you can get. I mean, it it does look really nice, and I guess for me, it. I I was just really cur- curious about, you know, how it how it plays in terms of you know you're flying all around space and within worlds, and it feels pretty nice. I. But I was just wondering, though, if there is, like, a motion control, you know, being able to... Because I know you can go forwards and backwards and sideways, but, like, is there some sort of motion control that I can use? Because I think just coming out of playing Splatoon 2 uh, last year, I was so used to using motion controls. But I understand it's a different game. It's it's a totally different atmosphere. But, I mean, is there an option to do motion controls, or is it just you have to use the... R- as uh, far R- as I like... know, there's not. Uh, yeah. I will say this. Uh, the... The game kind of controls on this dual stick type configuration, so up down on the left stick goes forward and backwards, or or basically boost and break, right? Right. Uh, yeah. Where your right stick is kind of turning your camera. I honestly, when I'm playing and I get in like a dogfight in in mm-hmm. outer space or something, I think it controls really well. 
Yeah, it does. Yeah, it it's really smooth. Yeah, I've you know when things are starting to heat up, I really uh, I, I really feel like I can do what I want to do for the most part. Mm-hmm. That said, uh, some of the situations you get in, you're fighting against like six really powerful enemies, and and I I'm finding that they're just kind of torching me right now. So I, I'm <laughs> there's some stuff I don't understand about the game and the way the the weapons work. Kind of like Sergio was saying, this is a really expandable game. Like you can put. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wings on wings on wings with a weapon on yeah them. like there's a bunch of different things you can do with the configurations and it all changes the way that the ships feel i was actually very impressed by the the difference that the r-wing felt to the uh i forget what it's it's called but the tank style ship mm. uh the way that feels is a lot more sluggish and, and hard to move mm-hmm. but obviously a little stronger on on defense and such and it just I don't know. I like from a gameplay point of view. I, originally, I said that you know this could either be like a, a six out of ten or a nine out of ten type game. Just from the way the game is controlling, the way it looks, the way it plays right now, man, I'm really high on it. Like yeah. I really, really mm-hmm. like it. Yeah, same here. I I have a really good first impression of it. I'm I'm so glad I got it digitally. I, I, you know, actually, even even from a week ago, I wasn't even considering it until like I started watching more videos. It's like, oh, okay, well. You know, man, I th- I feel like I I need to get this game. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> and then I I find I caved in. I'm like, you know, it's gonna be great. And yeah, it's I I really do like the different weapons that you can use. Like there's there's like this really nice rapid fire, and there's like this, this shock wave and or this this ice thing. And um oh, and and there's some weapons where you have to charge and to shoot, which I feel like it it is nice to have because then you you know you have one weapon that just goes and then another one that yeah another weapon that just you know, you just wait for it and charge, like, and, yeah, it's it's just very versatile, and, and you know, even with the voice acting, like, I don't know if you guys have paid attention, but it's, like, for me, I, I, I'm enjoying it quite a bit, you know, and, and always hearing Fox's voice, and even the intro, when, when you hear that good luck, like, oh, man, yeah. that was just, like, <laughs> that was so dope, like, man, oh, it's, also, I will, I will always love every time they bring the that thing. Yeah, oh man. I, I don't know. I'll, they did so. I'll say this: the Star Fox integration in this game is perfect. Mm. It's really, really well done. In the fact that they brought all the voice actors from Star Fox Zero, which I thought was a really good move. Uh, the characters feel real, and they've written a lot of dialogue for them. Like, so Starlink is kind of made so that you pick your pilot character and then uh, they are talking to the characters around them and it's it's meant to feel fairly natural but what i found was fox just fits right in like yes he sounds and talks exactly like star fox would in these situations and the other characters respond like they would so i mean yeah. <laughs> so far yeah. i'm really happy with what they've done with star fox which the more I think about it, the more I realize that he's like a top five Nintendo character pretty easily for me, uh, which is kind of interesting mm. given his, you know, a little bit spotty history in the actual series. But I really like the character, and I love that they've they've done him so well mm-hmm. in this. Also, I got to play the first uh, the first little part of the Star Fox missions where you're actually going after Wolf. Mm. Man, it's good. Like you're actually going after the the outlaw. Uh, base a little bit and there's a kind of a dogfight against a really large ship and then a bunch of small ships come and just the feeling that that delivered was amazing it actually it felt a lot more actiony than the main game so i i kind of like that they did that but yeah i'm i'm so far i'm really pleased with it i've heard it gets a little repetitive uh but honestly with this kind of gameplay loop i'm probably still gonna like it Mm-hmm. Just because I, I kind of like the, you know, you build up the planets, you explore a lot of stuff, you go try to build everything you can. Yeah, mm-hmm. that that appeals to me personally, so I, I think I'm going to really dig it, to be honest. Nice, nice. And and yeah, like you said, the Star Fox integration is great. It, since that's what I'm here for, pretty much, I feel <laughs> yeah. like the, the other part of the game is not getting in the way. I actually like it. Like, they have a they have good characters and a good story to tell, so it's like I'm getting... An extra story on top of my uh, sidestep for Star Fox, so I'm um, definitely can appreciate that. And yeah, I I really 
really like the real real time weapon change. I'm just waiting for a uh, giant enemy crab now. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys fought the first prime? No. I have not. Not yet. Okay, so just totally. fight the first prime and then you'll understand. <laughs> That's a heck of a battle. It's it's really fun actually. So sure. But yeah, I mean I'm doing the same thing that you're doing, Sergio, and probably the same thing most people on Switch are doing, and that's <laughs> completely ignoring the fact that there are any other pilots yeah. in the game. <laughs> and really just treating this as, you know, Ubisoft does Star Fox open space type <laughs> yeah. game, which, you know, it honestly, it works really well for that. Like, it, you don't go in expecting a, an arcade Star Fox game. Don't go in mm-hmm. expecting anything that you've really played before in in the series, but you can expect the characters to be here because they are, and and they're really good. <laughs> uh, they've even gone so far as like every pilot has a, a special attack, mm-hmm. and Fox is actually it's called rock and roll, and it actually calls in one of the members of the Star Fox team to help right. you start shooting at guys, and it plays the original theme from Corneria while it's doing it. Nice. And it's like mm. it's the most hype inducing thing ever. <laughs> I, you can kind of feel there was a lot of like respect and love that kind of went into this right. and right. i really appreciate that yeah for sure and it's definitely really nice to have that integration with star fox and but i don't want to discount the other characters though so i do want to i do want to go through one playthrough with fox mcleod but then at the same time i do want to try the other pilots too because then there's a reason why they're there and you know it, it'd be a disservice not to use those other pilots and stuff so you know it's man but you know i mean you know star fox is the intention grabber for sure. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this game sold a lot more on the Switch than it does on the other two consoles. True. The other consoles combined. It almost has to. Like, I think it, it does. Yeah, actually, it does. Because then, well, you know, I don't want to like disrespect you know Sony or Microsoft because I mean, because I'm, I'm sure the game looks really nice. On Why not? PS4 Ubisoft like, is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like seriously you can't like they released this game with this amazing amount of extra content on nintendo only yeah which is kind of incredible if you really think about it I, yeah and it was really heavily advertised and now i just i can't get past the hey you could either play the version with the star fox stuff or without <laughs> yeah you know and that's the thing like if so if you so for me, like if I were still playing on the PS4, I apologize, Sony, but if I had my PS4, you know, and if I get this game, I wouldn't be able to play with Star Fox at all. Like it's just like omitted completely because uh, I didn't really look too much into that. I just focus on the Switch version. So yeah, Ubisoft was was in a conversation with Nintendo, and they're like, "Hey, Einstein, I'm on your side." And it's like, you know, uh... <laughs> hey, stop! <laughs> I have one opportunity to okay. do these things. Okay? Yeah, I got one. <laughs> I know. Shut. It was like, look, I'm right always saving go. your hide slip. You can let me have these. <laughs> <laughs> true fan, true fan. But I, you know, I gotta say, like, ultimately, I really, so far, really enjoy the game. I think mm-hmm. we didn't even touch on how it looks. It looks incredible. Oh, it's even... maybe one of the better looking games I've ever seen, just in in art style. I haven't even played on in dock mode yet, but even on like just tabletop or handheld. Ooh. I mean, oh, dude, just... play it in docked. It, like, oh, man. It looks good in handheld, but you plug that in and y- you'll have... Boom. <laughs> I mean, it- it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you you play mostly in docked, right, Serge? Yeah, yeah, and I can definitely, like, it does look amazing. And I'm a little concerned about the fact that one of the negative aspects of the game seems to be that it's a, it can get a little repetitive. Because that's something that you want in these kind of games where you have mm-hmm. multiple ways, like, you know, uh, Toys to Life kind of thing, like Skylanders. Uh, there's there's reasons for multiple playthroughs or going back once you get a new character. I hope there's something like it on this one. And another thing that tends to happen with those Toys to Life games is that we get sequels. So that everything you have, Ooh. all the toys and content that you have, carries over to the next game. So... Yeah, uh, yeah. I can already. I can. I already expect it. Yeah, Starling too. <laughs> yep. I will say, yeah. a lot of the weapons feel really different, like we touched on. So I mm-hmm. could see playing through with different weapons and actually having a really different experience. True. Like one of the right. weapons I don't have right now, and I'm actually kind of considering throwing the five bucks to get it. Is uh, it's called the meteor, and you charge it up, and it 
Yeah, it's actually like a battering ram. Like when you let go of the button, oh. you charge forward and it's a fire oh. attack and it, it looks amazing. So Damn. you got that or you've got like this missile barrage or you've got a charge laser or a Gatling gun. I mean, there's a lot mm. of variety there. Not to even mention like the different pilots and ships. Like I do think that I do think that it'll pl- apply for e- even if not multiple playthroughs, but multiple you know switch your configuration while you're playing just as you yes. want to, which right. is kind of how I play these kind of games anyway. You know I'm like well okay now let's try this weapon and this weapon. You know why not let's <laughs> let's yeah. do it. Uh, so I I think this is gonna hit me really well and. Mm-hmm. You know, as somebody who who looked at this two E threes ago and and thought, well, that might be cool. Um, <laughs> I'm really happy with how it's turned out, especially with the Star Fox stuff. It's I'm really having a good time so far. Yeah, and I for me especially, I I want to be able to try like higher hard difficulties because right now I'm just I'm just playing on normal, just trying to get the feel of the game, and then later on, like after you know one or two playthroughs, I, I definitely do want to step it up a little bit try like a hard difficulty you know just try to get better with the game i mean this is definitely one of the games worth getting better at and i know there's other weapons we gotta try out but you know for me i love the rapid fire stuff you know like the i mean it's i don't know it's it's, it's definitely a preference of mine but I, I i you know charging something and landing fly i mean like how cool is that so uh i i'm just looking at my switch right now <laughs> and like i'm just i I I can't wait to play more of it. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's all we we're gonna do it. <laughs> so who who knew Starlink's not such a screw up after all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for those who are listening to us about Starlink and just what we talked about, I I mean I don't know about you guys, but I definitely recommend it just upon based upon initial impressions and just the, the first couple of hours playing. I think it's definitely worth the the buy. And I mean it's. It's definitely a pretty solid game so far, and you know, hopefully, there's more to come. And I've heard some some things online about really cool Star Fox stories that are, are gonna be in play later on as we go through the game. So pretty excited, man! It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and we'll definitely, you know, I, I, I assume we will touch back on this and, and give kind of an update on yeah. on where we went. But we should initially, yeah, it starts off really strong. It makes a really good impression, and and the things in place that I've even heard some negatives on, uh, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, everybody's different. And as long as you're enjoying it and having fun, I mean, that's what matters. Although it is nice to be more informed about how other people think about it in terms of like what they see and what they don't like. But, you know, in the very end, it really depends on what, how you feel about the game. So I think we're all in unison that we do like the game quite a bit. And yeah, that's that's what matters. All right, then we're gonna go into all range mode and actually get into some listener mail questions that people do, have been do, sending do, us. Do in. do 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 <laughs> <laughs> do 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 do. What the heck? Uh, <laughs> I was trying. I was, I was remembering the all range mode like music. Nice. From Star Fox hey, what's the big idea? Oh, oh man, you know this is like. Okay, I see. Can't <laughs> let you do that, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so. <laughs> From from Mal Helian, who, uh, as I mentioned before, has extremely good taste in music, uh, he actually wrote us Boom. something that we never had, we have never actually answered, and and maybe should have been the first thing that we did answer. Uh, just simple. What made you guys decide to create a podcast? So, Kevin, you want to start this one off? Yeah, sure. So, I know, especially with you two, you know, you guys were very forward thinking about you know doing some sort of media some sort of you know being able to talk about video games in in, on a wider scale not just with friends but just trying to make a connection with you know people outside of our circle and for me i was i I was on the fence at first you know i i wasn't as crazy about it but then when i thought more about the idea of doing a podcast and having had experience with doing uh two podcasts, you know, you know, one episode of each, and I thought, yeah, you know, three times the charm, and I think this might be a good experience for me, and to be able to reach out to other people about having a, you know, just having a different outlook on video games, and, you know, the format that we employ is very casual, and I, I think it was just, 
I'd be lying if I didn't say I, I didn't take inspiration from other podcasts because I listen to a lot of sports podcasts, and then there there are a couple of video game podcasts that I've listened to that you know definitely I've learned a lot from in terms of how to present content. You know how do you how do you talk about it? But then I feel like you know I have my own way of talking about things, and and you guys too definitely. And I think that's the beauty of our podcasts is you know we you got three different personalities and just with with different video gaming lives albeit there's some there's certain video games that we bo- we all enjoy like super smash brothers but i think i guess what made us decide to create the podcast is just i, I th- for me personally i thought it was just to have fun and just be able to you know reach out to others and give a different take on video games uh, in a more casual fun way so um and and look this is our 17th episode and it's like it's it's amazing, you know, and like from last week, Daryl, you talked about those three people that reached out to us from Europe. Like that is amazing, and <laughs> yep. uh, you know, it's that's what makes this great, and it makes it fun. And I guess I don't really have a, I don't really have a direct particular reason why we decided to do a podcast, but I think the simple the simple reason for me is just that it's just to have another outlet, have fun, and mm. be able to you know, learn about each other better and engage more in conversation with other people. And I think that to start a conversation, I think that's why in, in my my defense, that's why we decided to create a podcast is to start another conversation network and just to go from there. Yeah, no, th- that's a good point. And um, aside from that, or on top of that, you know, it, it, there's a lot of little things, but one thing that really carried everything like in, in it unified our approaches to this is that we wanted to do something different something mm. that even ourselves didn't know what we wanted to do <laughs> at that <laughs> point exactly <laughs> but we knew it wasn't going to be your typical no nah. you know just just talking about the news or talking about like recent stuff that's why this episode we didn't talk about starlink at all because everyone else is doing the same thing right yeah why would we oh. talk about starlink right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> no no I, i'm kidding of, of course you know we're gonna when there's big big events like this we have to cover them but we definitely take things from a different perspective and and i love that about us and, mm-hmm. and we just keep doing that in mm-hmm. in definitely having people reach out to us and and telling us where where they listen from and how much they enjoy the show it just really keeps us going and it makes it all definitely so much worth it mm-hmm. yeah i mean it's something that i've played with for a long time uh and actually try to get started <laughs> a few mm-hmm. times uh sergio and i actually have a recorded review of splatoon 2 that has never been <laughs> released at this <laughs> point but we wanted to do kind of like sergio was saying we wanted to do something a little bit different there's a lot of shows out there that kind of just run down the same news and obviously you know yeah, uh, like... we're not blind to to the fact that we're one of a lot of Nintendo podcasts out there, <laughs> but they're a fun company to talk about, right? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff happening, especially right now. The Switch is actually popping at, at this point with a, a ton of new games and and a lot of stuff to talk about. So it's something fun. It's something that we all cared about. We all uh, found ourselves talking about in normal conversation. So it just it kind of evolved into the you know, why don't we, why don't we actually try to make this something? Why don't we, you know, try to share these opinions and discussions that we think might be, you know, entertaining or, or maybe informational or, or whatever, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily think that we know more than everyone out there. I I, I definitely don't think that, but, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you approach things from a little bit different method and you, you, you all kind of grow together. So, mm-hmm. That was kind of my ultimate reason for wanting to do this, and you know, I just kind of wanted the experience. Like, I just this is this is the first podcast I've done, so mm-hmm. it's it's been fun. That that's that's pretty much why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's you know, and just to piggyback on what you said earlier about you know we don't think we're we don't really think we're better than everybody else. Like, we're just three guys who happens to have a love for video games and just want to share with other people, and hopefully, we can hear about other stuff back and be able to learn from each other. So, you know, there's, and I think also from what Daryl mentioned, you know, yes, we do talk about a lot of, you know, game stuff, some fun stuff, but there's also some serious stuff too. That one episode we did about the male benefits, the psychological, the emotional things that come out of playing video games. I mean, that was a very, a very meaningful episode to us, especially because 
You know, we've been through, we're at the age where we've been through quite a bit. We've seen a lot of things and, you know, having video games in our corner has given us a, that breath of life, you know, being able to go through life, being able to figure things out, problem solving, which we've learned from video games. I, I know I have, and just be able to get through, get through life and find a purpose in life. And, you know, I'm not going to get too philosophical about it, but it's like therapy. I think doing the podcast is therapy and you know, being able to share the same interests and uh, talk about video games in this manner. I mean, it's cool. And, and just getting the feedback from everybody about, you know, how we're different, how, you know, we're, we're, we're a lot more casual and just a lot of them, they just, they just say, Hey, keep it up and just be yourselves. And I'm like, yeah, heck yeah. We're going to keep doing it. And obviously <laughs> We're we're not satisfied with our progress. I know I'm not, and you know we're just gonna keep getting better and better. And I mean, hey, we're at episode 17. I mean, that's that's pretty darn good, and it's great. It's it's really fun. Yep, yep. So, uh, I guess moving on to to a mail that uh, Kellen actually sent us. So, I he wrote in. I was wondering why you guys follow Nintendo closer than Sony or Microsoft. Is there anything that Nintendo specifically does better than these other gaming giants? Uh, and that's all i got which yeah. nice nice he actually had that in there yeah uh, oh, so sergio why don't you kick us off on this one huh what <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Serge. no i mean <laughs> hold still and let me shoot you <laughs> nice so uh i did grow up playing uh Mostly Nintendo, actually exclusively. Nin- no, not not true. <laughs> I did have Joke. a Genesis. <laughs> oh, oh, Sega but, started so well. <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, I don't like Sonic anymore at all. What? It's not shots it's too- fired. <laughs> no, I I don't like it. Oh no. It's okay if you like it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, definitely most of my gaming has been on the Nintendo side. At some point. I realized there's a lot of other games that Nintendo just wasn't getting. And for one reason or, or another, you know, it, it's not, it's kind of, it's up to the developers, of course. So the only thing you can do is get another system. And, and I actually had a PC at that point. And I played a couple other games like Mirror's Edge and Dead Space. And I realized, man, some of these games are good. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but, you know, when we're talking about exclusives and, and about, First party developers. I mean, I cannot not go with Nintendo. They have, uh, you know, when you're comparing first party AAA games, they're all really good. But the Nintendo ones have this certain magic to them that you just don't get or you hardly ever get in, in other, mm. with any other developer, really. And, and I guess that's why I'm, I'm more on that side when it comes to between Sony and Microsoft. I do like some of the Microsoft exclusives more. But to be honest, it's only because I haven't really played many of the Sony ones. Mm. So I guess the, the Microsoft ones appeal more to me. And, and I do have all the systems, and I do play a couple of games on each one, you know, whenever something that I'm looking forward to comes out to each one. But the Switch has been at least, uh, I want to say like 85% of my gaming has been on the Switch mm. since it came out. So yep. mm. I'm super happy gamer. And, and you know what? That's You're definitely right on the nose about you know, just that charm that Nintendo games have to be able to captivate your spirit and be able to give you that fun that you've never had ever until you first play it, play those games. And for me, you know, I'm a big Sony guy, you know, like I, I, I played a lot of PlayStation games in my life in terms of just like the Final Fantasies and the Uncharted's and, you know, yeah, the Call of Duties, which, which is, by the way, a very important part of my life in terms of gaming because I had that chance to play with my housemates and I've talked about it already I think in episode 3 about how playing FIFA and Call of Duty on the PS3 at the time just really it really made me happy just being able to play with the guys and just have fun and and learn how to be more competitive but not to you know not take it that personally just 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 have a lot of fun and just get better with it and you know there's a lot of first party games on the Sony platform that I really like, like Uncharted, you know, and Crash Bandicoot and those those sort of franchises and it, it's you know, it for me, I I've I've always 
love the systems that they made and it it made me dabble into different kinds of games and just like assassin's creed and even with nba 2k like i used to love playing sports games not that much anymore but at the time it was pretty awesome because you know just having people that i can play with competitively and just get to know more about the sport like fifa was great because you know as i said before i've learned a lot more about soccer and just be able to learn about the teams and how to play and there's a lot of games that on the ps4 when i got it like just it was just a match made on earth <laughs> but the switch is a match made in heaven because <laughs> it totally changed my gaming life just you know rekindling my love for nintendo games because I, you know for the wii u to be honest i mean i got mario kart 8 uh, 8 and super smash brothers for wii u but that's pretty much it and okay and and that yoshi game but you know i i missed out on a lot though like splatoon like Holy shoot, I definitely would have played a lot more of that, but I just, my focus, my attention was on, you know, a lot of games on Sony, PlayStation, and some on PC, you know, cannot discount The Legend of Heroes, Chosen in the Sky. I mean, you know, that is one heck of a game, so, and I'm really big on going to some of the gaming events before, like E3, I went twice, and then PSX, which I think is my favorite gaming event to go to just because it's not as crowded and i get i met the did i talk about this i met some of the uncharted okay a lot of the uncharted voice actors and it was so dope like oh my god i was like geeking out like it was it was so rad and just getting the the autographs and i even met tim schaefer you know like one of my favorite game developers like heck yeah who want to want to do that like just even talking about it gets me going and you know, that's why I, I I relish having, you know, other games in different platforms besides Nintendo. Although Nintendo, like NES was the first console I've ever owned and I've ever played games on. And, you know, there's always going to be a love there. But I, I think I think the reason why we talk more, why we follow Nintendo closer than Sony Microsoft is because we share that bond of Nintendo games that is really strong. And, you know, you you hear about our histories with different Nintendo games like, that's pretty dope, man. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, so mine is fairly easy in that the Switch is the only console that I own, right? So, and that's just kind of a remnant of growing up. Like, we did have a PlayStation, but for the most part, I was constantly making the choice between the Nintendo console of a generation and, you know, whatever competitor there was out there. Mm-hmm. And the competitor never won out for mm-hmm. me when I actually looked at it. You know, I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't have a whole lot of money and time to throw at, you know, multiple consoles, a ton of the games, and and things like that. So ultimately, I had to make a t- decision. And did it kind of hurt to watch Final Fantasy VII go by? Yeah, it did. But the choice that I made there was to play Super Mario sixty four and Zelda Ocarina of Time and Smash Brothers and and so on. Yeah, going back, I'd make that same choice again, you know. Mm. So it's that that's kind of what led me to now. And and at this point, as I've kind of grown up, I've come to realize like I play video games that I think are fun. And actually, this podcast has kind of helped me realize that, specifically with the the Hollow Knight discussion. Is yeah, when a when a video game makes me feel stressed out or not a, I'm not even talking about difficult games, but when it it's intentionally stressful and I'm not having that much fun with it, I don't really like playing that game. Mm. And when I look at this is a pardon me, this is a, a way oversimplified version of this, but when I look at the libraries that are on Xbox and and PS4 in particular, you know, you see a lot of shooters. You see a lot of like gun heavy games you see a lot of uh, sports games driving games i don't like so, so i can have fun playing those but those are not my favorite type of game so i've never really felt like i was missing out with my choices and now we've got the switch and and i'm at the point in my life that there are way too many games to even keep up you know right. on one console and that was not the case on wii u but then wii u had these gigantic time sync games like Splatoon and Smash Brothers and and things like that. So I didn't really feel like I missed anything during that, even though it was kind of a 
a, a drought console, but mm. I don't know. I I have always supported Nintendo. Uh, I love what they try to do with games. Like mm-hmm. I love the fact that a game like Animal Crossing exists, even though I'm not, you know, I'm not the biggest Animal Crossing fan in the world. I'm actually talking on a podcast with him, but <laughs> I, y- y- you know, I. I like that that style of game exists. I like that Splatoon, a game of uh, transforming squid kids shooting paint at each other. I, I like that that exists in arms um, with, with springy arms and not to even get into the, the weirdness of Mario's and Zelda's and, and Smash Brothers. Like, I want to support this company because this company is doing things that make people happy. And they're specifically, like, from... Man, I remember some quotes from, like, the 90s about... I think it, they were from Miyamoto, and I'm going to extremely paraphrase them, but basically that your game should be fun. Like, you should come up with a fun idea and then build the rest of it. And I think that Nintendo has always held on to that, and it just aligns with who I am. Like, that's that's the type of game I want to play, so naturally that's the type of game I want to talk about and and enjoy the community with, which also i got to say, the the... By and large, the Nintendo community is a lot of fun. Like, mm. you'll always have the people who kind of <laughs> hate being a Nintendo gamer because they're missing out on X, Y, Z, or you know, we don't have the the right tech and voice chat and things like that. Things that I can't argue with, right? But right. By and large, like this community is kind of crazy. Like, of uh, just a group of people who really want a a corporation to succeed because we like what they do you know think about that for a second <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's huge <laughs> and it's just you know when you like with our friends like with our groups of friends when we talk about video games you know i'm i'm sure it's like this with you guys but for my group of friends especially you know a lot of the games that they remember playing they remember talking about and be able to relate to most of it is from nintendo games you know, like some of the, like, even like one of my friends who, actually one of my closest friends, uh, shout out to Steven, you know, he, he's a big, you know, first person shooter kind of guy, loves to play Counter-Strike and some of the MOBAs and all that and like the Battle Royale type of games. But I mean, when he brought up the fact that he played Golden Sun, I was like, dang, like that is, <laughs> a, that is a GBA game. He, he loved that game. I was like, yo, that is legit because this guy is not a, he's not much of a single player kind of guy. But when he said Golden Sun, I was like, okay, I see you. I mean, because that was a pretty quality good game. And guess where it was hosted on? Nintendo. So, I mean, yep. it, it's, it's, we said it before, it's got that charm. And, it's, and I think that's what makes Nintendo specifically better than the other gaming giants is that they make, as we mentioned, like memorable games. And it just it has that charm that just captivates your spirit. And I think that's what they have the advantage on. And yeah, sure. Their online capabilities may not be the most advanced, but I I think that you know when you have that sort of charm and you're able to you know pull people in into the system, that's what that's what matters. And yeah, you could have better graphics here and there, and yeah, you could play like maybe 1440p and 4K. But I mean, with the Switch, I don't even think about that. Like I'm already having fun, and you know, <laughs> 1080p on Dock the 720 on 720p on handheld or tabletop is pretty decent enough. I mean, obviously, it wouldn't hurt to have 1080p on handheld. I mean, yeah, that would be dope. But you know, it's Nintendo has they're doing something right, and they've been doing it right for the past like 30 ish, yeah, over 30 years of of making yep. video games. I mean, there's a reason why they're so successful. Yeah, like maybe a lot of times. Not a lot of people agree with the Wii U, like, oh, it's whatever. I've, and, you know, I've heard a lot about that. You know, people have been saying, I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, Wii U isn't that great, but, hey, it had some really awesome games, and I actually think it's underrated. And then with the Switch that came out, it's like, whoa, like, this is, you know, like, finally. But, you know, in reality, Nintendo's been making good stuff all the time. It's just, it, it, it definitely appeals to, you know, a lot of us, and... You know, with different gamers out there, you know, Nintendo has definitely been just the the most memorable part of gaming life. And you know, I, I it, it, like I said, it changed my life in terms of video gaming, especially with the Switch. And I mean, we're making a podcast on Nintendo. Like, come on, man! Like, seriously, like, <laughs> like, like I like I said before, it's fun to talk about them. Yeah, exactly. Like, enough said <laughs> for me at yep. least. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, I'm I'm just gonna jump into the next uh, mail unless you guys have anything else to say. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. All right. So from shy guy, uh, do you all have different aspects of your personality uh, shine when gaming and recording? Versus how you might manifest your personality in other contexts, or do you fairly or con- are, are you fa- fairly consistent throughout? In other words, do you have a bit of an alter ego when you're gaming or recording? Uh, I know we all act differently based on social context, but mm-hmm. is it drastically different, or does repping yourself as a gamer tag bring out a quote unquote different side of you that most don't normally see, or are you the quote unquote same you all the time? So. I mean, I'll just jump in on this one. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm I'm pretty much me, right? I this this is how I am. I'm I'm kind of a laid back, uh, generally trying to have fun guy who uh, overthinks himself a little bit. But one thing I, I will say that when I'm talking about games or when I'm talking or when I am gaming and such. A lot of times I'm just having fun. So a lot of times that just comes through. Like there's um a while back in the Discord I, I posted uh a video of, of myself playing Smash in a tournament and mm-hmm. you know, you can you can watch it and I'm I'm just having a, a good time. <laughs> like <laughs> so I I get obviously I get a lot more animated than I normally am and I, I get a little bit louder than I normally am and and crack a lot of jokes, whereas normally in, in kind of daily life i'm a fairly quiet guy but that's the big change i mean there's not that much change between who i am recording or who i am posting on discord or or talking on voice chatter or whatever um to who i actually am so this is me (laughs) i'm you know i'm very similar (laughs) i I actually i wrote a lot of similar notes because it's true um you know i tend to keep to myself i'm not loud like you said but when it comes to gaming, it's my passion, my biggest passion for sure. And it gets me talking. It gets me passionate, opinionated. Um, a f- funny story, for example, during E3 a couple of months ago when Nintendo didn't announce Animal Crossing, I was so ready to go on Twitch and just rant <laughs> about it and why it was a wrong decision and why Nintendo is dumb. And <laughs> you know. Whoa. Playtime is over, Nintendo. Oh, no. <laughs> but, you know, I decided to sleep on it. And the next day I was about 10% calmer. And that was enough to, to cool me down and, and make me rethink this. No, but it's true. Um, gaming makes me passionate. And it, it really brings out more opinions on me. It definitely makes me a lot more competitive. If, if it's not gaming, I'm not necessarily competitive. But also, I'm I'm a very positive person overall. But when it comes to gaming, I kind of see the negative of it too, and I kind of mm-hmm. look for it also in a way. Like I always say things like, "If something makes so much sense, then, then Nintendo's not gonna do it." <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I feel like I've learned that from gaming. But I, I like that. I I like the fact that I can see both sides of this hobby and this passion of mine. That's something that uh, you actually see pop up in a lot of uh, journalists or, or podcasts or whatever that that cover Nintendo. Eventually, the negativity creeps in. <laughs> it's really, it's really odd, and I'm gonna try to fight that as long as possible. You know, I'll I'll, ca- I'll crack jokes just like you did about, you know, well, this makes too much sense for them to actually do, but yeah. <laughs> ultimately, my goal is to stay more positive because you do see that on a lot of uh, a lot of outlets over time, just become increasingly negative about this. Yeah, and like it also makes me more demanding because I know what they can do because I've seen them do it. <laughs> <laughs> you you know I it's maybe not so much negative. I think it just it just shows that you care. Like you you're very passionate yeah. about Nintendo and like you care about like what they do. So you know naturally if they do something that you know may not may not be like what you think is the best decision, and I I can share the same. <laughs> Seven, you know, you're gonna be like, oh man, why are these, you know, what's such a dumb decision? Like, what's going on with Nintendo, man? Come on now, and and okay, so I guess for me, besides having, you know, just the the natural ways of (laughs) swearing here and there, you know, I I do swear quite a bit, but uh, I'm pretty much myself on on the podcast. Uh, You know, I've it's it's interesting. I've gotten used to just not cussing 
online. It, it uh, like if you were to ask me like seven years ago, man, it's it was over. Like you're <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna hear it, you know. And and I mean nothing nothing too crazy, but you know, yeah, I'll I'll drop some f bombs and you know s bombs and um <laughs> b bombs. I don't know if anyone says that, but you know it's just it's just the nature of my competitiveness, especially when I when I play competitive like you know sports games or first person shooters. You know, even even third person shooters, or not as much, but you know, is it, that's just the nature of my character. And but I I never try to offend somebody or take it personal. I mean, unless they're trying to do, unless they're trying to make it personal, then you know, you're in for a war. But you know, obviously for me, it's just <laughs> yeah, I'm just you know, it's being real about it. You know, keeping it a hundred as always. But yeah, I I bring in the same hype, same energy. Well, maybe not a lot of. Not, maybe not like super much energy just because like you know i don't want to like overpower anybody when i talk to people and stuff because you know for me like <laughs> i always love to listen to other people what they have to say and and i learn a lot from i'm actually i actually love to listen more than talk because for me it's like i get to learn more about other people like i get to learn about you guys and what you guys have to offer in terms of your game experiences and and how it aligns with mine and you know just learning from each other i think that's it's an amazing feeling because when you when you shine by yourself, it's not that fun. But when you shine with like other people, heck yeah. Like it's one of the best things in the world, <laughs> man. It's like so cool. And I feed off that as my as part of my personality, my character. And so when we game, we record, I mean, it's always fun to record with you know, you guys and and like I said, like we've been the 17 episodes together, you know, and this is it's awesome. And I'm you know, when you meet me in person, you know, I probably show you some of the I, i'd be more reserved in terms of like my energy but then if i get to know you a bit more i'm like you know heck yeah it's, you know it's all it's gonna be all good so <laughs> you know for me it's and and you know like sergio can <laughs> can vouch i mean i i don't when i when i meet like people in general like i don't want to just like oprah string them with energy like hey man you know like it's it's just not it's not <laughs> cool because then yeah you either scare them off or you're just it's just not genuine and for me like i am a bit more reserved um in person but once you get to know me more it's like dang like we're we're gonna have a fun time and you know i feel off people's energy people feel off of me and it's just a great time and i think that's just part of you know how i live my life and with gaming especially like i'm always thinking about the other people in terms of like you know like are they having fun you know i i value the, the importance of other people having fun more than me is 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 very distinctive. Um, you know, I always want to make sure that everyone else is having fun, and you know, even if I'm having a bad day, like if I can make other people have a fun time and have a good day, have good days. I mean, that's just that that makes my day great. So, I think that's how I look at it. And so, in in short, TLDR version, I am the same person, just not cussing here. Although I did leave one. <laughs> I did swear one time in the, in the previous one previous episode, but you know, holy shoot, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure everyone knows what that really is. So it's all good. <laughs> all right. Uh, you guys have anything else? No, I mean, if anything, if you get one thing out of this episode, some advice, use bombs wisely. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to use bombs, and if you're gonna use it against other people, be, be prepared. But hopefully you don't, because you know we're just trying to make the world a better place. And that just sounds like the corniest thing I've ever said. But you know what? <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, it's not the corniest. Well, it's the corniest thing I've said. It might be top five. <laughs> yeah, top five. All right, all right. Well, you know what? Fork it. <laughs> Here we go. Well, in that case, gee, we've made it through the podcast. How swell. Uh, that's going to do it for episode 17 of the Nintendo Jump podcast. If you do like the podcast, please let us know. Uh, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Nintendo Jump. We also have a Facebook group that we'd love for you to join and a Discord group. Uh, you'll find links to both of those in the show notes. So love to talk to you on there. If you have any comments or questions about the show, future topic ideas, or music suggestions, please write us at nintendojumppodcast at gmail.com. Mm. I, I will say that we have gotten a lot of music suggestions, so music episode number two is happening sooner than you might expect. Whoa. Um, <laughs> uh, 
We also need your help, Star Fox. Uh, we want to ask that you please give us a review at your <laughs> podcast app of choice. Uh, that it really does help people find us, and you know we we definitely appreciate any time that you can leave us a five star rating or or an actual review. Uh, you know, or or just be honest. If there's anything that you would like us to change or take a look at, uh, please just let us know. Um, with that, I think we're going to jump on out of here. Once again, this is Daryl, and for Kevin and Sergio, I uh, just want to say thanks for listening. Goodbye, everybody. Take care, everybody. Do a barrel roll. Yippee! We did it! Also, there are roughly 26 Star Fox references in this episode. Uh, hit us up if you can find them all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm probably yeah. low on that number. <laughs> <laughs> bye, yeah, everyone. Bye. <laughs> For real, bye.